Atlanta Falcon game tonight was so frustrating. It was so annoying. I was so angry. I was so confused. It was mind-boggling to see what happened happened. You know, it, how do you process a game like this? It, it's crazy. It really is. But I got to say this. Despite all those things, there was more good to come out of tonight than anything else. <laughs> Yo, everybody doing? King Ding Bad here, and I'm sure you guys are all asleep right now. You're all resting, feeling good, trying to, you know, get ready for tomorrow and all those things. Uh, it's 1 o'clock in the morning here, and I got to tell you, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I, I can't sleep. I have... 103 degree fever. I'm sick as hell. Got the flu. Laying in bed with the aches and just not feeling good. Now, when I started my stream today, uh, I was at 102.4. By the time the stream was over, I was over 103. Uh, I am not feeling good. I am not doing good. But while I lay in bed, while I sit there, I cannot stop thinking about this game. I cannot stop thinking about this game and, and just trying to process and break it down. There were so many things that happened in this game. I, I just had to come here and kind of just get this off my chest because um, like I always say, YouTube is my psychiatrist and I gotta, I gotta pour and spill my guts tonight because I'm very frustrated, I'm very frustrated. You know, when I first did uh, my prediction schedule back in the summer, I had this as a loss. I had the Falcons game as a loss. I, I thought this was going to be a tough game. I never bought into the people who were trying to tell me this is a you know this is going to be an easy game. Uh, playing Atlanta in Atlanta is never an easy game. I don't know why anybody would think it is. Um, this was going to be a tough game. I thought it would be a little more high scoring, um, but it was a tough game. But to try to predict everything that happened in this game is is crazy it's crazy now i was getting pretty snippy and i apologize to those if i was snapping at you and in, in my stream but i was getting frustrated about with the wentz haters uh not the cowboy trolls or the people that just troll wentz because he's an eagle but but eagle fans who just don't like him, okay because there's a lot of that uh where they blame him for everything you know and um it, it, it's it's game is so hard to process um you know we come out and we lose all Sean Jeffrey. We lose Deshaun Jackson. They're both gone the whole game. I mean, you lose your starting wide receivers. Uh, you know, I mean, that, that right there really, really hurt us early in this game. Because what happened was, uh, I think it kind of threw this whole offense off. You had Carson basically having all these young and other receivers that he really hasn't worked that much with. None of them were getting open. If you seen some of the shots there weren't guys open at, at times you know what I mean and at one point Aguilar goes out so you have no Deshaun no Aguilar no Alshon and Carson struggled and the offensive line struggled and he took a beating the offensive line was not good tonight especially Sayo Malo I mean how many times are you going to get penalties it, it was crazy you know and they struggled and, and and we went through the half only down four by you know thank Thanks to Matt Ryan for basically keeping us in this game. The defense made some good plays. It was nice to see Jim Schwartz blitz. He brought Sandejo a couple times. He brought Malcolm Jenkins right up the middle. And that's what you got to do. And sometimes that pressure causes players to make mistakes. And you saw a couple interceptions that were because of it. Um, I thought Ronald Darby didn't really have a good game. I know he had a good interception. Um, but it was really because of the pressure that caused the interception. Uh, Ronald Darby, at one point, they went long was like three times in like five plays to the same exact spot, same exact route. And Darby was beaten the first time, overthrown. The second time, overthrown. The third time, touchdown. He got beat and nobody adjusted. Nobody changed it. Nobody said, watch out for this. They're attacking him. They just, they just did it. You know, so that was frustrating. All the injuries was frustrating. It was like watching the body bag part two. You know what I mean? Except for on us. I mean, Jernigan, Alshon, Deshaun, Goddard got hurt before this game. Uh, he wasn't going to play. It, it, was, it was brutal. It was a brutal game. And, and the Falcons came out, and they hit hard. They hit hard. And you know what? Congratulations to the Atlanta Falcons. Congratulations to all the Atlanta Falcons uh, fans. I take my hat off to you. 
You guys won. I'm not going to give you excuses on why you won or, or say that this or that. I'm not here to say any of those kind of things because you beat us tonight and a win is a win and tonight you were the better team. Congratulations. Um, you guys deserve all the credit. I know you've wanted that one for a while, you know, on us. Um, but this game is hard to process because Carson was so bad in the first half. He was bad in the first half. Now, I'm going to say Mike Rowe and the coaches, I don't think they helped him out. When you lost your top receivers, you're still throwing every down. It would have been very nice if you could have seen these guys start to run the ball, use the running backs a little more, use Sproles, use Howard, use uh, Miles Sanders. It would have been nice to see it. You know what I mean? It would have been nice to see throws out of the backfield and that kind of thing and get those running backs involved because you had everybody. That, that would have been what I think they should have done in the first half, and it might have helped them maybe have a seven-minute drive, kind of get everybody going. Instead, they had Carson throwing, throwing, throwing. None of his wide receivers are really there, and it, it became a hard thing, and, and he struggled, and he started to force it. Now, some people were saying he got hit in the ribs and he got hurt. Maybe so. We'll see. If we'll find out later in the week. Um, he definitely went out for a while. They were testing him for concussion. McCown comes back in, and as soon as... Soon as McCown comes in, it's Carson can't stay healthy. Carson this, Carson that, Carson this, Carson that, Carson this, Carson that. Damn! Aren't you Carson? Aren't you Eagle fans? Don't you like Carson Wentz? Foles is gone. He ain't coming back. Carson's the guy. You know what I mean? I don't get it. I don't get it. I almost feel like some people want him to get hurt. Some people like it because it's like, a, you know, it's a, hey, I told you so moment. I'm not into told you so moments. I'm into winning. I want to win. I want my quarterback to win. I want him to stay healthy. If it's Foles, if it's Carson, I don't care. Whoever it is, I want him to do good. You know, but it feels like sometimes people just, they don't care. They don't care if, if Carson does good or not. They just want to say, I told you so. You know, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. You know, but he, he went out, he comes back in, he struggled in the first half, he was horrible in the first half. Let's just, let's just be honest, he, he stunk, he, he stunk in the first half, Carson stinks in the first half, no doubt about it. You know, and then in the second half, you come out, Corey Clement fumbles, boom, they get the ball, I'm thinking, oh God, we're in trouble, we're in trouble. You know, the defense stepped up, they did, and um, you know, it, it, then all of a sudden, Carson started getting a little groove. Carson started to play a little bit better. You know, having a chance to regroup, to change things up. Doug Peterson is a masterful, he's a masterful guy at halftime at adjustments and doing those kind of things. Not great at scripting plays, as my man shout to Adrian from Bitter Bird said. Not great at scripting the first 15 plays of a game. But, man, the guy can make adjustments. And he has got balls. Big brass balls. Random things are swinging. He's on his tiptoes. Tiptoe Doug. That's what I call him. But man, you know, to, to go for it. What, where was like fourth and goal at the like five or something like that? To go for it there instead of taking the field goal to, to, to you know, basically make it, what, an eight-point game or something like that? He goes for the touchdown and he scores. I mean, that was great. And Carson, he made, I think he hit Aguilar. That was a beautiful pass. And after that, that really energized his team. Carson got into a groove. Carson got going. They, they all did, you know, and even the defense was stepping up. And then we hit the fourth quarter. We hit the fourth quarter. The, the, the quarter in which clutch quarterbacks are judged. In which quarterbacks who are supposed to be winners are judged. And what did Carson Wentz do? He went on like an eight-minute drive, gave the team the lead. He gave the team the lead. He gave the team the lead. There was nothing in that fourth quarter that wasn't clutch that Carson Wentz did. He was clutch. He was clutch, and he did a great job. Now, I don't care what he did in the first half. I don't care how bad he was for three quarters. In the fourth quarter, this is where everybody tells us for how many years that it matters what you do in the fourth quarter. It matters what you do when the game's online. Well, what did Carson do? He gave you the lead. He gave you the lead. That's a clutch quarterback. That's a clutch quarterback as far as I'm concerned. That's what I want from him. 
Last week, 17 nothing Comes back. Sorry, but Carson Wentz is showing signs of clutchness. That's the truth. Okay? And then Atlanta gets the ball. Julio Jones with the big touchdown. They take the lead. What happens next? Carson Wentz. Second play after they get the ball back. Fires. Down the sideline. Wide open. Nelson Aguilar right in his hands. If he holds on to that ball, it's a touchdown. He's scoring. Nobody's catching him. It's a touchdown. Carson Wentz, comeback victory. That's what we're talking about. He dropped it. Carson didn't throw it high. He didn't throw it low. He didn't throw it here. He didn't throw it there. He put it in his hands like butter. And he dropped it. And I'm not supposed to criticize Nelson Aguilar for that. People tell me, oh, you're too hard on Nelson Aguilar. But then they say, oh, you're too hard on Nelson Aguilar. But Wentz is a choker. Are you kidding me? I'm not putting up with that crap no more. That's how I feel. Carson Wentz came through tonight. He did what he had to do. He did what he had to do. On fourth down, even though they didn't get the first down, pressure up in the middle in his face. He had no chance but to throw that ball. What does he do? He throws it. Uh, Ertz didn't get to the sticks. He didn't get far enough. It happens. He had to throw it. He had pressure right in his face. Made a perfect throw. Carson Wentz was clutch. Carson Wentz was clutch. I want you all to hear this. He was clutch even though they lost. Even though they lost. And some people say, well, he didn't get the two-point conversion. Do you know they changed the rule? you know why they didn't give him the two-point conversion? They said he gave himself up when he went down. No more diving in and you get the yard. They say he gave himself up. New rule. Stupid rule. Stinks. Stinks. Carson Wentz didn't play a good first half. The Eagles offense didn't play a good half. The offensive line was horrible. They didn't play good in the first half. As a team. But here's what I'm going to say. There is something to come out of this game. To me. That is very, very good. A good sign. And that is this. This team has a heart of a champion. This team does not quit. They do not stop coming. They don't quit. And Carson Wentz, as bad as he struggled, when the time came, when the time came to put the team on his back and get them the lead, he did it. And there's something to be said for that. You know, you're not going to win every game. No. But there's something to be said from that. There's something to build on from that. This guy showed us he can carry his team. He shows flashes of greatness. He has to learn to be more consistent. Yes, he has his mistakes. Doug has his mistakes. Everybody does. But they kept fighting. They kept coming. And as bad as they played, the Falcons couldn't put them away. And that's not because the Falcons stink. It's because the Eagles have a heart of champion. This team is all heart. All heart. And I'm telling you all this, this loss tonight, this loss tonight will only benefit us down the road. This is one of those things you can build on. We can build on this. Carson can build on this loss. I have no doubt that this team will be better because of this loss. I'm not so concerned about losing week two. I, and it's not a big deal. We lost week two last year. We lost week two um, to Kansas City and won the Super Bowl. And the game we lost to Kansas City was much like this in that we couldn't just seem to take the lead and give up the big plays and Carson threw an interception and there were things that we didn't do great. But you could build on it. And that's what I'm saying about this loss. This loss was hard to watch. There's a lot of crazy things that happened. But the one thing I know for sure is that when the time came, the quarterback put you on his back and gave you a chance to win. And you can't ask for anything more. We can build on this. Carson can build on this. And I'm telling you this. We are going to be better because of it. Carson is too. And I'm, it's going to be a two-team two team race in the NFC. Eagles and Cowboys. Cowboys are good. They won tonight. They beat the Redskins. I'm going to give them all the credit in the world. They beat two division teams in the East. I'm not going to take anything away from them. I'm not going to take anything away from Dak. I give you what you earned. You earned those. You got them. You won. Good. Now get ready for us because we're coming. I don't care. We lost this game. We're going to bounce back. We're going to bounce back. And I think we're going to go in there and we're going to beat Detroit next week. 
Then you're going to see the Thursday night game against Green Bay. It's going to remind you of the Carolina Panthers game. Mark my words. And we're going to go in and win that. The Eagles are getting ready to go on a roll. This loss stinks. Sucked. I hate it. But if you're really honest about it, if you really look at it in the grand scheme of things, there's a hell of a lot to build on, especially from what the team has inside and what the quarterback has inside and his ability to step up his game in a game he's not having his best game. Any quarterback could go throw five, six touchdowns, great, you know, you know, hey, I threw five, six touchdowns, I'm feeling good, I'm having a great game, and play it out. But when you're struggling and you're down and you get knocked all over the place, to be tough enough, to be good enough, that when the pressure situation comes, to basically put your team on the back and try to get you to win, like Carson did tonight, that's hard to do. And that is something we can build on. So I had to get that out. I need to go back to sleep. But you know what? Yes, we lost. But I feel good about where we're headed. I feel good about the future. I feel good about what I saw from Carson and the rest of this football team. We don't have no ticker problem. We have heart. And a lot of teams can't say that. Would Dak Prescott do the same thing if he lost Amari Cooper and Gallup in the same game or throw in Ezekiel Elliott? What about Drew Brees if he lost his receivers? What about all these other teams if they lost their top two guys? I don't know. But Carson Wentz, I do because he showed it. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Don't be a dingbat.